Greetings all, I am Seminary Scholar, and this is my channel, where I discuss the beliefs of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. To preface, I have attended the Church's Seminary and Institute programs, and I am going to be providing official church sources, so I am trying to make this informed and accurate. That having been said, I'm not an official representative of the church, and I don't have authority to speak on their behalf. So just take my comments with a grain of salt, and if you want to know more about what the church has to say for itself, go ahead and check them out on their own website. Um, all of the links in the description lead to that website. They've got a search bar for any questions you might have in particular. This week, we're mixing it up a little bit. Uh, those of you who have been following me know that I have been working on my Exploring the Articles of Faith series, which fit ended last week as we got to the last Article of Faith. Um, this week, we're going to be doing something different that I'm really excited about, and I'm going to call this series my Perspective Essays series. And it's going to be a much more casual analysis of basic beliefs that we have in the church. Um, I'm going to pick a subject. Um, each essay is going to be a couple of videos just to keep the lengths reasonable. Um, but I'm going to pick a subject and I'm just going to discuss it. Um, very similar to how you would hear it discussed in, say, a Sunday school lesson in our church. The hope here is that I, we can, is that I can introduce people to how we believe in practice and how we discuss what we believe and kind of take some of the mystery out of, out of what we believe and just kind of talk about it in a casual sense. Also very similarly to how you might hear a member of the church respond to a question. Um, so just very casual, conversational. It's still going to be doctrinally accurate to the best of my ability to recreate. And I am going to have references in the description that are backing up the bare bones of what I'm saying. Um, but again, much more of my opinion and experience mixed into this. So check out the church themselves if you're looking for a strictly accurate source. This is just a perspective that happens to be from the church. Now that we've figured out what we're doing, um, this first essay is going to be on spiritual fitness. And when I say spiritual fitness, I'm talking about it as a complementary element to physical fitness. Um, and in order to understand why we have these two views, although maybe it's kind of self-explanatory, this is just an interesting trivia, but in the church we have a concept, um, and that is the concept of the soul. Um, important point, we do have two definitions of the soul, of the word soul that we use in the church. The first is just referring to the spirit. The second refers to the combination of the spirit and the body and the kind of entity that is created when that happens. Um, so in the church, we believe that a person is comprised of their spirit and their body and that you are in some degree a different person when your spirit is not in your body. And this is because your body has elements that affect your spirit. Um, you're probably familiar with this. Like it can be as simple as being hungry or cold or as complicated and nuanced as having a chemical imbalance in your brain that causes a mental condition. It's very broad, but the idea is that our bodies very much can influence who we are. Um, and so the idea of spiritual fitness is interesting because you don't hear it talked about a whole bunch, at least not in that way. We hear a lot about physical fitness, but spiritual fitness is often discussed separately. And I think that's weird because it's actually really similar. Because when you think about physical fitness, you think about diet and exercise, what you put in and how much you put in and what you put out and how much you put out, and how you put it out. And it's no different with spiritual fitness. Um, except instead of putting in food, you are putting in sensory inputs. You're putting in movies, books, um, theoretical texts, discussions with friends. You are putting in information that colors how you perceive the world and how you process information. Um, and then when we're talking about putting out, when we're talking about spiritual exercise, um, we're talking about doing things that adhere to the beliefs that we form as a result of taking in information. 
And this is why people volunteer. This is why people donate money to causes. Because you want to act in accordance with what you believe. And so people will get information. They will see, oh, that person is in pain. That person needs help. When I'm in pain and when I need help, I want people to help me. So I'm going to help that person because I would want them to help me if our places were switched. And that's not perfect reasoning. It's not universally applicable to everybody. But that's a basic rundown of it. That's like somebody trying to figure out what they want to do. And then they'll go through and do it. And we're going to be discussing both of those in more detail. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about spiritual nutrition in more detail. And then week after that, spiritual uh, fitness or exercise. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this new series adventure. I look very much look forward to seeing you next week. If you are interested in this content and would like to see more, please subscribe. Um, see you next week.